Let's bring in political analyst Sanusha Naidu now. Sanusha, thank you so much for waiting. Uh, lots of very interesting response coming through. John Stiernazen of the DA saying, we've seen this movie before. It's called Inkandla. Do you think it's a fair comparison to make between the two presidents? Uh, good evening, Sally, and good evening to your viewers. Um, I mean, I guess political parties are at liberty to use their their, their space in the way they want to. And I think um, uh, the opposition will always have that, that level in which they'll want to, you know, take as much of a swipe at the president. Uh, and, of course, at the ANC, given the fact that in terms of what happened previously, the ANC kind of also did not necessarily um, be able to hold their own president accountable. But I'm not sure if, 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 if that's an accurate reflection of what we are seeing today. Yes, there are definitely issues we need to think about in terms of the kinds of questions that are being raised around transparency, accountability. But I think at the same time, um, we need a little bit more of level-headedness and not these kinds of just attacks in, in going forward. We need to understand what this means in the context of our political body and our body politic of the state, where we are as a, as a country in terms of the crossroads that we find ourselves in. I don't know how you feel, Sadi, but every time I feel that I'm, I'm getting older and older and my heart can't take any more of this kind of crisis. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that uh, after the couple of years we've had with a, a pandemic and all the load shedding and now torrential rains and floods, it just it just seems endless. And we've still got to get through the ANC conference, which starts on Friday. It's going to be really interesting when that integrity committee report is made public. We don't quite know what's in it. Uh, speaking to Lakona Mguni last week, political analyst and host uh, here on ENCF on the spot, he said that if, if you look at the trajectory of the preliminary report, it, it would suggest that it wasn't going to be very rosy when it comes to President Ramaphosa. If that report does find that he's brought the party into disrepute, do you think that it's going to deliver a mortal blow to his chances uh, for re-election within the party? And, and before you answer that, I have to just note that one of the ANC MPs in voting no, and gosh, I didn't know there were so many ways to say no in South Africa, <laughs> um, but one of the ANC MPs said no for now, which kind of suggested things could change. Do you think we might see that change at the Party Congress? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it really raises the incomprehensibility, but the unpredictability of where we are and what's going to happen at the elective conference in two days' time. I mean, the Integrity Commission report is going to go to the new NEC that's going to be elected. And that's also a crisis within a crisis in terms of the nominations and those that have been disqualified and, of course, the contestation and the litigation that's following that process. So the challenge here is not just about what is going to be in that in, in, in report in that report and how it may construe that the party is in a state of self-destruction, that it is in a state of crisis, that in a sense that you know it's almost this this time bomb that that's just exploding in, in in many ways. But the problem is then how do you deal with that? Because you're kicking the can down the road for the next NEC to deal with. Now, who makes up that NEC, how that goes about, it's going to be interesting because then it comes back to the question of whether the president uh, is able to consolidate this, this victory for now, which, again, as you rightly point out, is not one that is completely galvanizing him at the elective conference. I'm sure they're going to be incredible issues from floor. They're going to be tensions. They're going to be incredible uh, shouting matches like we've heard that there's been happening in caucus. Uh, it's going to be very rambunctious in the way that it's going to come across. And so the people that were brave enough to stand up and say, as uh, Mrs. Shlamini Zumas did, um, said to, to, to them, I'm voting on the basis of integrity and principle. Now, this is going to be even more dynamic in, 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 in the elective conference because it's rules again. These rules that were supposed to be put in place a long time ago, they're supposed to have been ventilated and vetted. They're all coming back in a sense of a head in terms of the crisis. So I think the, the challenge right now is what the steeple race looks like for the president. 
in yeah. terms of how he's going to go forward. And it's not just the elective conference, like you rightly pointed out. It's the South African Reserve Bank issue. It's the investigation by SARS. It's the Hawks investigation. And of course, there's also the, the acting public protectors report. And then, of course, there's a number of other issues that also need to be looked at in terms of what kind of financial regulatory issues that needed to also be ventilated in this whole mm. process. So right now, I think it is just one side for the president. But I think the integrity report, if it goes light, if it decides to tread lightly, I think that's going to be a key issue that's going to internally uh, implode again for the ANC at the elective conference yeah. or, or post the elective conference, depending how that elective conference nominates and elects the NEC. Very interesting. And as you say, there's so many challenges coming at him. It's like one of those crazy video games where you're on a conveyor belt and there's things coming at you um, all the time. And also, we've just heard from the DA that within 48 hours, they're now going to call once more uh, for an ad hoc committee to look into Palo Palo. We know they've tried to suggest that before and it was rejected. And essentially, uh, the, the committee into impeachment, which has obviously been voted down now, would have been pretty much an ad hoc committee. Um, so there's lots that the president has to face. Let's talk about the five people. Well, actually, I think it's four, and the fifth person uh, just got confused about her vote. Um, but when Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma said, I vote yes in favor of this report, I wondered if she wasn't leading the way for a lot of people in the party, the so-called 42, who would then have the courage to follow her lead. It did not pan out that way. Essentially four, maybe five people. Uh, and it's the people yeah. that you would be not surprised to have made that decision. Um, significance of that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there must have been this idea that she would lead, uh, given her stature, given her her kind of standing in the party. And, and what has she been raising in terms of the rules, etc. Remember when this whole thing came about, and especially when the report was was released in the terms of its recommendation. I think it was her that said that the step aside rules should apply, in a sense. So I think this is something that you know really shows how deeply divided and the cleavages that exist in the party. Now, obviously, the challenge here is what does this mean going forward? I mean, the ANC has issued the senior membership, uh, the the even. Even if, if it was so finely balanced in the caucus and in the NEC, they had decided that they would reject the report. So to stand up and say, no, I vote yes, and this is why I vote yes, I think also raises the question again around what the ANC is grappling with in terms of its own integrity mm. and its own kind of sticking to its own kind of rules of how it actually deals with internal uh, dissent in the party I mean, and how this is going to play out. Whether or not the other, sorry, whether or not the other, um, if you take the, 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 the four plus one and the other members who felt that they could not stand up and be as bold as, 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 as Dr. Zuma did, I think also raises the question of people now worried about, hmm, what does this mean for my future career and my future prospects? Yeah, exactly. And where would I go? It's so true. And, and it's an interesting one with Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma. Um, She's in the president's cabinet. Yes, it is within his power um, to take people out of his cabinet. He can absolutely do that in a heartbeat. But when it comes to the party process, Gwede Mantashe is saying, well, you know, basically, if you stand up and defy the party uh, and, and refuse to toe the party line, you've pretty much taken yourself out of the party, stressing, of course, that there needs to be a process within the party. But he's saying you've essentially opted out of the party. However, if the party does act against and cause Zana Dlamini Zuma, couldn't that cause more problems than leaving her where she is? And I ask that because, of course, she's one of the people that is hoping to challenge for the presidency, and she's fairly confident that she can get that 25% of the votes from the floor. What do you think they're going to do? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if this actually raises another specter for the ANC elective conference, because you're quite rightly, as you uh, characterized it, I mean, you've got Gwede Vatasha, national chairperson, and he was very instrumental in what happened in the 
immediate period after the report was released, and of course the special NEC, and then how that got adjourned, and then of course the NWC, and then going into the NEC. So all of those processes as well, it's quite intriguing for me that they didn't really get process right in the first time around with regard to this report. But he was quite instrumental in how he positioned that process. Now, the question here is, you've got very You've got two very senior members. You've got Gweri Mantasha and you've got Dr. Nkosazana Jamini Zuma. And of course, it may just end up in a situation where if indeed there's a sense of that she's not getting the kind of respect that she should get, that in a sense that she's almost this kind of elder in the party and she was bold enough to stand up and challenge the, 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 the internal dynamics of being told how they must actually vote in this in this um, in this uh, adoption of the report. I think the challenge may be, as you rightly point out, she could galvanize that support in terms of getting the 25 percent from floor, but it could also end up in, a, in in backfiring in terms of what happens at the branch level because we're also dealing with this dilemma in the party of what happens to those nominations for those individuals that were disqualified. Where does those branch nominations go? Do they go back to pool? Do they actually get uh, decided upon, or do, be, do they become null and void? I mean, there's all these interesting uh, dynamics and dilemmas that face the party. But more importantly, there were two members that weren't there as members of, of parliament that did not come to parliament and vote, um, and who are also contesting the elect, uh, electoral, uh, election con uh, conference in a very real way. Uh, one is Dr. Zwellium Keys. So, mm. yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of open season right now. In, in, in terms of where we are and where we are probably going in the ANC. Yeah, and, and one thing's for sure, Sanusha, if we were hoping for a quiet December, it ain't happening. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, chatting to us. No, it's not. <laughs> not at all. Thank you so much for chatting to us. Political analyst Sanusha Naidu, we've got plenty.